All right, so if you're not quite done yet, that's okay. I'm going to start to look at a few of these. Um, so, um, I'm going to first add a section with some general ideas, and then I'm going to go in a little bit more specific to people. But sometimes I'm going to, in a sense, repeat myself because you all have unique content, but you can still follow certain conventions, certain things that are consistent. So I'm going to add a space at the very top here uh, to give you some general ideas. Again, I have a handout a little bit later that I'll give you once we actually start to write, but I'm going to say you want to think about writing some sort of series. So serial writing. What can you write in a series? If you didn't know, some uh, or most of the works of Charles Dickens were serialized. Every week or month or whatever, these stories were being published. The classic A Christmas, a Christmas Story was, was published, you know, one chapter or whatever a week, and then eventually collected into a, the classic novel. So thinking about what can you write serially. You might have an idea to write something that is a thousand words long. You could divide that into a hundred words at a time. And you could publish that once a week or once a month or whatever. So serial writing. That would be take a long form article or, or post. We'll use different terminology at different times but they're interchangeable to some degree. Take a long-form article, um, divide it into chunks, publish on a schedule. How big, chunk, how big of chunks and so forth? We'll talk a little bit more in detail once I get into specifics. But as I just said, if you brainstorm one weekend and write a thousand words and decide that you're gonna publish 200 words at a time once a month, you've got content for five months right there or you could publish a hundred words you're gonna see actually a hundred words goes by pretty quick but let's say a hundred words and you're gonna publish those 100 words once a week then you have 10 weeks of content serial writing and that would also that's what also entices people to subscribe to your blog to come back to your blog and to keep reading your blog here I'm writing uh, I'm saying about writing serial uh, content, uh, specifically, uh, let's say, in my example right here, where I said, uh, I'm, I, I collect cookbooks, which I do, and I want to blog about that, well, I've got 40 cookbooks, so perhaps uh, once a month I'm going to write, uh, I do a little write-up on a particular book. So as I'm saying here about serial writing, that also relates to, um, I'm going to say, article of the month, article of the week, article of the quarter. What can I write that I'm comfortable publishing once a month? What can I publish once a week? Once, what can I public once a quarter? Publish once a quarter. So, in the example of my cookbooks, once a month, I could uh, write a hundred words on sort of a review of the book in total, or maybe my experience with the book. I found this book at this thrift store. This book was given to me by my grandmother. I could write a hundred words about that once a month, a sort of a, a review of, of one book. Once a week, I could publish a short hundred words or so um, on a particular recipe. Because I'm taking, maybe I'm sharing the recipe as is and writing a little bit of commentary and a picture, and I could do that once a week. And then once a quarter, I can write a longer 500 word um, essay uh, on some deeper topic. Like maybe I have these particular books all related to Southern cooking. So I'll write a longer 500 words on these three books of Southern cooking. So obviously I'm not saying you have to do this, but think about that. Can I do this? Can I write something once a month? Can I write something once a week? Can I write something once a quarter? 
because this is the concept, writing content on a regular basis, relevant content. Don't focus on one topic. I'm writing about cookbooks, but related in that realm of cookbooks, uh, I could include uh, maybe a restaurant review. It's food related, but maybe I have a cookbook about Thai cooking, and I actually visit a Thai restaurant and maybe have one of the dishes in the restaurant and I've got the recipe and I could write something about it. So I'm not literally always writing about the cookbooks, but I'm writing about a topic related to the cookbooks, about food. So don't focus on just the one topic that you might have. What other satellite topics? So think about incorporating satellite topics. Was that site where I learned to tie a tie earlier today, was it only about ties? No, there was an article also about razors and an article about the right shoes and so forth, and all of that relates to style. So here, even though at my first thought was I'm going to write about my cookbooks, I can incorporate other satellite topics. Like I said, restaurant reviews uh, related to some of the foods or recipes from the books that I own. Or maybe, after I have some time, make a short one-minute video about me making that recipe in the kitchen. Have my friend hold her cell phone and record me as I make that dish. Um, and write a blog post where I write a few words and put the video, because the, fo the focus of that post is the video. It doesn't always have to be literally words. It can be a blog post that has a video. So think about how multimedia can be applied. And multimedia is video, sound, animation, and of course pictures. These are some general topics to think about. I'm going to focus in on a few people's uh, particular what, what you wrote and we'll see what we can come up with, but any questions on these that I've written so far? All right, so Grace wrote, I have recently retired and I would like to blog about this phase in my... I forgot to say, I'm going to read these out loud, so hopefully you didn't write anything not safe for work. You can still go back and edit them if I haven't gone to yours. I do make one-of-a-kind jewelry and, may, and maybe I can tie that into it, but my primary motivation in blogging is to tap into the community. You've got a lot of great stuff that you've written here that you could be writing about. You could easily write, you know, once a month you've got your travel blog, uh, your travel post of your blog. Uh, then you could go in here and once a quarter, well, what are you, what are you writing about here with, with friends in particular? Maybe shared experiences in a particular... Um, community. Um, you probably have a lot to write about your pets as well, uh, sharing pictures and maybe some video and so forth. So um, again, it doesn't have to be a sales driver. Uh, I, like I'm saying, I'm often using the terminology of your business and making money and so forth, but you could be writing for the fun of writing. That's perfectly fine. So again, what I would be saying is here, I would love to read your series on uh, My World Travels blog. And once a month, you're writing and, and posting pictures on the different places you've, you've traveled. Maybe including in that post, you're also showing a map of the world or your, wherever you've traveled, and every time you add a new blog post, you check off a place in the world. So as people read more of the blog post, they see more of the world or your travels being checked off on a map. Can that map be interactive? It could, but it's going to need to be probably a plug-in or some other like mini app that will make that work. And world travels with uh, updating map. So that's one possibility. 
any questions, comments, suggestions that stand out as uh, as a way to what what would you like to to read about you as an audience? What would you like to or what would you expect to read here, perhaps? So this is pretty fertile ground. I think you've written some good, planted some good seeds, and like I'm saying, I would like to read whatever um, world travels you've done with a map to see where you've traveled. I, I have a comment. Yeah. Because I, I noticed the one of the kind of jewelry, like if you can post the different jewelry that you made for yourself on these traveling events. Yes, so, um, you know, a, a jewelry of the month post. So, yeah, uh, whatever jewelry you make, you can, you can showcase that. That's a good idea. Yes? This is more social media related, but I would definitely tie any um, blogs that you have on the jewelry, um, pin it onto Pinterest. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you want to sell your jewelry, that would be a really great site for girls to look at. Yeah, Pinterest is very popular. Uh, it has a it has a very high uh, demographic, uh, a female demographic, and so if you are uh, posting your content on your on your post on your blog on WordPress or Tumblr and then also sharing it pinning it on Pinterest uh, the great thing about Pinterest that I really like is that it has automatic attribution in that if you pin from your site it automatically has a link back to your site you don't have to worry did I make a link back to my site Pinterest does that for you so then people follow you on Pinterest they like that they click it they go back to your site to read more about it or buy it there or, or whatever so taking advantage of Pinterest and in general social media that's one of the ones that really, as we go through the class, we'll have a part about it, but also starts to think about, yes, you're going to be blogging and such, but also we're going to see that we can then connect our blog to Facebook, and as soon as we publish on WordPress on our site, it'll automatically also go to Facebook, and our friends and family will see it there, and that'll get us more traffic. Within WordPress, is there the opportunity to put a shopping cart? Yes. WordPress has a plugin. It's not built in. We can use a plugin to add a shopping cart to our WordPress site. <laughs> All right, going on. I want to write about my hobby of crocheting. I have been crocheting for years. I started off with basic stitches, making small items. Well, you probably have a lot of experience, a lot of how-to experience. So I would be very interested to see a series, a how-to series. you can figure out how to what? How to cross stitch, how to stop the bleeding when you poke yourself, <laughs> how to whatever. I'm not, I don't know about crochet. How to make a good knot. But how to. You ha you're going to have a how to series. Every month or every week uh, you'll you probably have a lot to, to share and uh, how to series with step-by-step -step instructions. would be very useful because that's a lot of value for your users. They're going to read, they're going to see some pictures, but then they're going to try to also crochet. If you show off your experience, your expertise, um, they will try to uh, to do it as well. And if they do, then I would definitely say um, activate comments because I want people that also uh, do the crocheting that that because they're inspired of you, you want them to share those experiences on your blog. That also helps your SEO. If people are interactive, interacting on your site, people are commenting, replying, and so forth. So we will be able to activate comments very easily on WordPress or Tumblr. Stop the spam. We'll talk about that too. We'll, we need to use plugins to help prevent spam. And we'll talk about moderation as well. So we'll talk about it. What might be interesting on the crocheting blog is Reviews of the implements of crocheting. Yeah, so other people maybe that are also starting off in crocheting are thinking about what's the best needle for this yarn. Yeah. Is it a good idea to give 
Like what sort of things? Um, well, it could be free instructions, you know, beginner or shame. It is a good idea to give free content on your blog because a lot of uh, modern websites and apps and everything, they, they often operate on a freemium model, which means they get you, people get a lot of free stuff from your site, and then you could have things here and there that are not free. You could have, you, you could have people subscribe to your newsletter, where then they will get an exclusive email that says, you can purchase this new video or blog post or whatever not available to the general public. So the general public will see all of these other free series, might entice them to subscribe, where when they subscribe they get the premium content. My first blog series will address concepts in a paradigm where there is a worldwide exchange of information and goods to create local community change in lesser developed countries. This sounds good um, to think about the human element, of course. Um, so I would like to have, I would like to read about the people, how the success stories, so we can say success stories. Hopefully you have some to tap into. Um, if you are connecting with people in communities in developed and developing countries, you, there must be people behind all of this. There must be success stories. So writing about these success stories is, of course, copious pictures and positive language. Uh, so basically, it's uh, it's it's feel good. It's success stories. It's um, success stories focusing on the real people behind the actions. You've got a part here where it says um, where local communities share their assets and needs and what they do with material supplies that they receive. So right there you're on that track, what they do with the supplies they receive. So that relates to the success stories. Um, Basically what's going to happen is that Travelers, they're going to tell about their communities. Travelers from other parts of the world who are going over to that area are going to just take some things. People from other parts of the world and spread their knowledge about the world. People from um, in these communities get things that they can use to do small projects and get them done right. Now let me ask you then, who is going to be writing these? Post. Well, um, um, because I asked. Usually, it's going to be people from the local community, um, and I'm going to do a plug-in on WordPress mm -hmm. um, uh, translation uh, plugin. Well, let me stop you there because uh, this was tying into a question earlier about who's going to do this. That it would obviously be ideal for the people themselves right. to be posting here, but if they don't have the experience of using the software to post, even though WordPress is pretty easy to use, it's going to be an impediment for the people themselves to to post. So I'm thinking, what about collecting at first oral posts, having people record what they're going to, what they want to write about, and then you can put a little sound file in the post. You could, or the editor, or whoever's working on the site, could have a little introduction to what they're going to say and then just have them speak in their own in their own words. So that one might be good to have um, you know an audio blog in the words of the community members themselves. I wonder about looking into um, relief organizations or or even you know school travel or groups that are pre-existing and already traveling. And that's the whole idea because... You mentioned travel. Well, and, but if you use... A lot of people travel um, for um, pleasure, for business, for school. Mm -hmm. And so suppose... Or, like, I love sports. Okay, suppose people... Well, uh, let, let, me, let me interrupt you. We have other people to, to look at. But these concepts right here, uh, I think these will get you in that direction. And I really think uh, for people to share their stories, perhaps the audio portion would really be most helpful. 
I want to write about food and cooking. Very ripe uh, area to write about. Again, uh, maybe write about write about your favorite dishes, favorite dishes, your most well-known dishes. Maybe write about my first time dishes. Maybe you are going to try a brand new dish that you read in this in this cookbook. Well, write about that experience. Did it turn out terribly? Great. That'll be a great blog post. Did it turn out well? That'll be a good blog post as well. But here then, uh, well, are you doing, um, you know, you could do reviews also. Reviews of the food, reviews of recipes, reviews of restaurants. Again, not exactly always relate related, um, always in, always exactly. This is an ancillary topic, a restaurant, with those sorts of concepts. Do kitchen tools are my favorite? Yeah. The kitchen tools I can't live without. So that would be the topic the title of a series of posts this month. The kitchen tool I can't live without. Spatula. Next month. The kitchen tool I can't live without. My bunt cake pan, etc. So you have this title that you're gonna build a brand around and on your regular basis you're gonna be posting about it. So if you can think about a catchy name either for the whole site or for the blog portion of the site you know, I could have victorsbakery.com, but then the blog is named Tales from the Kitchen. So that's the brand that, uh, that then I'm being known for on my blog or on Twitter and, and so forth. I want to write about grammar and copy, technical editing. My website is for editing. For my editing business, content would be directed at author students. I really see that as a great um, another sort of how-to kind of site. Um, you know, you could have some sort of series of do's and don'ts. Like the number one, don't, don't write wrong apostrophes, right? The do's and don'ts of um, whatever, do's and don'ts of grammar. Tips and tricks of technical writing or technical editing. So this really, I, I feel that this would be a great blog for concrete um, tutorials and advice. So you could um, you could also showcase great authors or great writers. What are examples of well-written content that you would say, look at this, learn from this example. So showcase those other blogs or those authors, uh, technical writers, books, whatever you feel. You're, in a sense, you're curating. That's the big thing nowadays, curating content. There's so much content out there. If you're a curator showing the best things, you become an expert in this field. So you're showing, you're using your experience to then showcase, curate great examples of, writer, of writers and writing. I'm using mistakes. That's perfect. You're going to be you're going to be writing on a regular basis. I mean, there's amusing mistakes. You can you can pull some of these from all over the web, where uh, you know if you look up, you can probably find a million results of look uh, do a Google search for grammar fails, and people will uh, will post pictures of all of these amazing failures of, of 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 language, and then you could post the picture on your blog and then write about it your own your own spin on it. Yes. So maybe um, one thing to add maybe benefits working with international clients or maybe international prospects mm -hmm. that might be a good deal as well. So that would be um, 
look into inter into the international community. Um, so that would be perhaps doing some searches for, like, let's say, we don't have an official one in the U.S., I believe, but other countries have, like, the official institute of the French language. So you can look up these official language institutes of various languages and maybe see what sort of resources there are there or ideas of writing or other uh, organizations to tap into. So research uh, language organizations or institutions and so forth. Generate more traffic for our home stay tours and English class business targeting Japanese people who want to go abroad. This would be a great primer for uh, for, for Japanese people that want to come to the U.S. to to learn about and immerse themselves in some of the culture of the U.S., the culture and customs, because obviously every every country has its customs and cultures and traditions and and you know um, quirks. So we could be writing here about um, you know the meaning of, and then you think of some sort of topping, the meaning of Thanksgiving the meaning of Arbor Day, the meaning of what are these American things that you're not going to find in Japan. Maybe there is something that has an analog in Japan. You know, we have Arbor Day and there might be some sort of Arbor Day in Japan and what are the parallels? Comparing and contrasting comparing and contrasting related holidays. That way that type, that, that taps into the Japanese person's own experiences and seeing that they are not completely different from the American experiences because there's something in common perhaps. So writing blog posts about the meaning of holidays or uh, slang or you know customs this of course would be advice, travel advice the the way to get you know your 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 passport uh, seamlessly uh, problems when renting a car uh, or getting housing and so forth um, having <laughs> post series yes. anti culture shock mm -hmm. uh, can you elaborate like a little bit more Something Americans do that might shock you. Okay, to be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I was uh, don't want to admit it, but I was at um, I was at uh, Carl's Jr. earlier, and I saw their brand new All American Burger, which is a hamburger with a hot dog, oh, yeah. and then on top of chips, and I think pickles. So, I don't think that exists in other countries in the world. So that would be great too. This is what American cuisine is. So anti-culture shock in that, um, you know, a heads up, heads up on U.S. oddities or strange things. Also different customs that things that Americans take for granted that maybe how we interact or... Exactly. So explaining, uh, explaining, explaining customs. That definitely would be a long series. You have plenty to write about there. My business is an acupuncture clinic in Mission Valley, specializing in pain relief, weight loss, facial acupuncture. Again, this is a lot of great information that could be that could be uh, shared. Um, maybe you could on on if you're doing something on a monthly basis. I'm thinking something to do on a quarterly basis is the the history of acupuncture. Um, that's something that could be written about. This obviously has a long history. You could be uh, writing little by little to educate people on on acupuncture. You could be writing blog posts again about uh, benefits of acupuncture. I 
have likes. Remember, for success stories. Success stories, success stories, testimonials. Again, the, the human element, uh, the people, their their result from coming to you for the for the treatments, uh, real people, uh, not the people themselves uh, writing, but you know you get you get their information, you get their feedback, and then you write it up and then put their picture and then of course at the very bottom a link over to book a, a session. Yes. Um, maybe when the dad um, educating people about pressure points and maybe um, things they can do at work if they have a project mm. is something like things you could do on your own. Yes. So, so that's some of that free advice. Obviously what you're writing here is not going to be a, a substitute for the actual session, but you know, if you give someone a little bit of knowledge here, uh, then next time when they're not quite able to um, fix something themselves, they think, well, I got that tip from this site and they know what they're doing, I might, I might get a book a session. So these are some good examples of about what to blog about there. Again, you should be seeing, as we're seeing everyone's examples here, that you might not have thought what, 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 you're, what you could blog about. You thought, well, I have this business and I'm going to sell my products, but you can also be blogging to get you more traffic, and that more traffic could lead to more sales. And again, I keep saying business and sales and all of that, but whatever it is you're trying to do online. If I'm trying to get a job as a web designer, well, I'm going to be blogging about web design tips and so forth, and then in the hopes that eventually I get some sales from that, some clients. Designing and making jewelry, jewelry trends, and recreative jewelry products. I like this one right here, definitely jewelry tr trends. Uh, regular blog posts on jewelry trends. What is hot now, what was hot last season, what might be hot next season. Showing off, uh, this would be another kind of showcase, showcase of um, famous people and their jewelry. Maybe you get some classic, you know, Hollywood, uh, Hollywood celebrities from the 50s, and what was their style? Maybe their style influenced your style in the jewelry making. So you could write about this is my piece but it's inspired by the piece I saw on Breakfast at Tiffany's. So write about how that ties with your work with some famous some famous um, jewelry. Uh, so uh, your influences in the craft. So you're be, you'll be selling your your jewelry. You could definitely then be focus, you know, uh, feature each piece. You you say the story behind each piece that you're selling. You you have the details about it on the store. It's it's composition and its weight and and price and all of that. But then on the on the item that you're selling, you also have a link to the blog post where people can read the 200 words about it what inspired you and what techniques you use and so forth. So that way people that happen to buy it, then they have this story that comes with the piece to make it more personal. I have a question. All of these great categories, do they have to be structured so you can hit your quarterly historical pull down menus and you can, you know, get the history of acupuncture or you know another menu bar of the testimonials. Do you have to categorize them, or will they just get lost? Because I read some blogs, and they just scroll on hmm. forever and ever. And by the time I'm at the third one, I'm like, okay. We should categorize. Okay. We'll see when we when we actually get into WordPress or Tumblr. We we have our we can create our own categorization scheme however we want, but uh, we could categorize and tag things in multiple ways, like this particular one. I could categorize it as quarterly, as well as gold, as well as how-to. So if someone is in the how-to category, that could show up. If someone is in the quarterly category, then they could see it there also. 
so we can have multiple categories, multiple tags. Yes. And we'll talk about that, about, well, what should I name my categories? How many categories should I have? We'll get to that. I want to write about life with my crazy 11-year-old son, Eli. I plan to use the blog uh, entries as an outline for a book. Okay, great. This is a sort of, you have to think about this. This is very popular nowadays, which is, which is uh, one term for it is crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is just basically everyone giving input. So you might want to think about, would you be doing any crowdsourcing here? As in, are you going to be asking your audience questions, and then are you going to incorporate any of those answers in the book? So perhaps crowdsourcing um, ideas for the book, like maybe the names of your chapters, the content, the general ideas of a, of a chapter, So basically, having a way for your readers to, to give you this feedback, for you to ask for the feedback and ideas and such, that's sort of on the meta level, on the higher level. Are you going to do that? If not, okay, no problem. You can just use it as a traditional blog where you'll be posting stuff and people will be able to read it and share it on social media and such. But crowdsourcing is a, is a movement that is becoming very prevalent online now, where people help and contribute with each other. Now, of course, that gets into murky areas about, well, if they thought of that idea and you incorporated it into your book, do you owe them royalties and all of that kind of complicated stuff? But if you have various disclaimers and such on your site saying any content that you post on this site becomes public domain or whatever, then that helps protect you a little bit more if you use any of those ideas in your for-profit book. I'm not a lawyer, but I'm saying that if you do consult one and have some sort of um, have some sort of limited liability agreement on the site for your protection and taking other people's content. The actual content of what you'll be posting about, that's obviously fertile grounds. You've got 11 whole years of, uh, of content to write about. As a matter of fact, you could be writing about that. You could have a monthly um, uh, series about year one, some recollections about year one. So a year-by-year -year series. Once a month, you're going to write something about year one, and then year two, and three, and four, and just keep uh, uh, building up to eventually in 11 months if you do this once a month uh, to the current time. Yes? Um, since kids say the darndest things, <laughs> you have a um, quote of the month for you? Eli's quote of the month is fine. There might even be a quote of the week. Probably a lot of great... Quote of the day. Yeah. 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 I Let... have a story behind it. Let's make it even harder on Heather. Quote of the day. <laughs> so probably uh, uh, Eli has said a lot of great things. So uh, every day you're gonna have, you, you can just write that one quote. That's fine. That would look really good on Tumblr. Well, even if it's on WordPress, but it'll still keep people enticed to come back. If they subscribe to your blog, they will get that quote of the day right in their inbox. And then uh, if you write a little bit more than just the quote, the email will say read more and that'll take them back to the site where they can read that more completely and other blog posts in the series with a read more feature. <laughs> if you're going to be if you're going to be in, in social media use hashtags. That's another topic but Oh, that's really cool. So have you heard of the website Fiverr.com? Fiverr, does it have three R's? It two R's. Fiverr.com. This is a website where people sell their services for $5. 
someone will do something for five dollars. So you could go on Fiverr and uh, hire someone for five dollars a shot to have them draw a little comic about that quote of the day or something. So Fiverr.com is a place for where people sell their services for five dollars per job. There's actually a lot of people that specialize in Yeah, it's obviously more complex, but if people are willing to do it for five dollars, great for us. So incorporate some sort of uh, some sort of um, picture or multimedia into that. I want to write about how to start your own business. I want to be a creative coach. This will be great. Very. This is perfect for a step-by-step -step series. Um, you'll have to help me about dividing it up into the big concepts like getting a business license, step-by-step -step series. So get a license, um, contracts, charging for work. So there's a variety of aspects in a business, especially starting a business, so this definitely will be a long-term step-by-step series if you're if you're going to be the one being hired you're giving away just enough information to have people go through the steps but then hopefully realize let me have a professional help me and then that's where you come in. So again, this is the freemium model. You're not giving it all away. You're, gi you're giving enough away to entice people to subscribe to you, to, to follow you, and showing that you're a professional so that then you could be hired for those professional services. If, if, uh, if I'm going to hire you for my think tank, I want to see your experience. So, a series on experiences. What companies have you um, worked with? What success stories have you had? What failures have you had and what did you learn from them? Motivational quotes. Motivational quotes and what they mean to you. So we can find a variety of websites out there full of quotes. We find business quotes or motivational quotes, we put them on the site. And then uh, you write what they mean to you for your business or what or how you will apply that to someone that hires you. I have an automotive performance site and want to drive traffic to it to increase sales. It's new and doesn't even show on Google results. Well, little by little we'll, we'll get there. But when you say automotive performance site, Dave, if you could elaborate a little bit, automotive performance, what do you mean by that? Okay, um, great. Then that would be uh, obviously not every product will apply to every car. I'm not going to buy, you know, uh, some spoilers or whatever for my, uh, you know, Ford Fiesta or something. I don't know. I'm not going to buy a particular thing for every kind of car. So you could write about how does a particular performance enhancement apply to a particular car. Does that make sense? Like, um, the best enhancements for the best car. Or, you have a particular item that you're trying to sell, so that would be another sort of showcase, a product. What's a particular product, perhaps, that 
sells well. What do you think? Well, well, that's what I'm getting at, that you could be writing about uh, the top-selling ones and perhaps insight into why it's top-selling, because it really works. It's really effective. Because this is all related to cars, you could have some sort of series on, you know, your favorite cars. Obviously, these are being added to a car. What about a series on classic cars? A series on muscle cars. With a lot of great pictures and, and text and maybe a video and so forth. Uh, because the thing about advertising, marketing, is a company is trying to convince someone of something. So if you're trying to convince people, buy this product for your car, look at how this product made this car amazing. It can make your car amazing. So you're showing success stories in a way to entice people to buy the product. You might have also here a, a do's and don'ts. Mine seems to have frozen up here. Here we go. Yes, so I was just saying do's and don'ts. You could write a series on that. Like, this product won't work on that car. So formulating a plan, essentially, ultimately a niche social media platform that would provide a service. That one, unfortunately, is a little too nebulous for me to give some good advice because there are so many social networks out there. The big one, of course, is Facebook, and there's Twitter and so forth, and Periscope, and Google+, Plus and Ello, and so many of them out there. So to try to also get your own social network might be difficult. But what I can say is read the blogs of the competition read the Twitter blog, read the Facebook blog, see what they're writing about and that might give you the best idea of what you can write about. So that's an idea of um, what, are, what, is every, what are they doing and what can I do and what can I do better. Can you put a, a, a form plugin into that too? Into your website? A forum? Yeah. You can do, you can do forums but that's not as robust as a modern social network where in a modern social network you can you know chat uh, two users can chat with each other and share pictures and all of that and forums can have some of that but forums are like the previous generation of social media social networks today's social networks are so interactive compared to a forum this is a starting point but that's what i'm saying that to try to break into make your own social network uh, a lot of people have tried and few have succeeded but I think to read what the competition is writing about and doing that might be helpful to, for you to decide what you need to do. Well, we still have about 10 more people to answer, but we're kind of at the, t at the point where we would normally have lab time. So what I think we'll do at this point is I'm going to end the main lecture and if you want my insight into your particular um, niche here, I'll talk with you one-on-one -on -one because I think hopefully you're seeing, even if, even if I didn't get to your exact one, you're seeing these concepts and how you can apply them to yourself. These series of posts that you can write and how often and what to do and so forth. So I'm going to end the main lecture with some final questions and mention a couple of things and then we'll have some lab time. Question? Will you be able to uh, give us a copy of this? Or? Yeah, if you take this link with you, 
Remember that the link that I put in the in the network drive. Take that file with you, and that has the link to this, so you'll still be able to access it at home. It's possible. It's possible, but we will do everything we can to get people interested in it. We'll try to get an audience, and that's where social media will come in. We'll tap into social media to find the people that would be interested in your blog and tell them, hey, here's my blog, and get traffic. It's not guaranteed, but we can definitely try.